Okay, folks, God bless you, and welcome to This Is It. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Before the fire. Guys, Um, the last video I did, I was so excited. I was, yeah, I was just beaming, freaking out. Um, I don't know if y'all understand that the mystery of the Bible's been delivered. It's the understanding and how to understand it from beginning to end has literally been delivered. It's nothing you could have studied and found out. It had to be delivered. It's not that I'm some special whatever guru and figuring stuff out because I'm not. Uh, but the Lord predestined me to do this as a gift to you. That's what it is. Um, I noticed in the video through the comments, a lot of people are suffering from the legalism that they, you've been indoctrinated into. And I want to help you set you completely free of that. And one way to do that is to bring, I want to bring Steve on, my friend that came down. My friend that came down um, to visit for a few days, um, who I took to the cemetery. I mean, it was so awesome just to get to see his face light up when he like, he had that. I know moment where he just knew is like, oh my gosh, that the Lord had communicated very clearly to him um, that yes, you're getting a white stone. I have five white stones up here. The Lord told me to, he wanted to give me these five white stones. He sent me down to the cemetery. All these things, every time is documented. Every single time I've been to the cemetery from the beginning time with Corey, when the Lord showed me the, the headstone that said Gallagher, from that time and every subsequent time I've been to that graveyard, it has been so miraculous, it's mind-destroying. Like, it's like something you'd read in the Bible. It's just not, it's just an impossible story that happens. So, I want to bring Steve on to help you get rid of the legalism. But I also want to give you a caveat. It does not, and I repeat, your freedom in Christ does not, and I repeat, does not give you license to sin. And people will, oh, okay, well, what that means is if you're doing something and you know it's wrong, it's against your own conscience, then you shouldn't be doing it. A lot of people talk about either drinking or smoking pot and those kind of things. And let me tell you something. I have diligently seeked out the Lord on everything that I had a question about smoking pot. Uh, years ago, I think in 2014, I was like, you know, I, sm I barely smoke pot at all. But at that time, I was also the uh, single parent of four children. Well, that could cause a problem. You know, like if someone ratted you out to Child Protective Services and they sent you over, like, let's say your enemy has it out for you and they said, oh, he smokes pot. Like, who cares, right? However, there is a reality that if you're a parent and you're smoking pot and you're neglecting your children because of it, well, then that's that's not right. So I diligently sought the Lord out and the Lord showed me, well, there was like a time where it could be like no problem at all. And there could be a time where, it, you know, you shouldn't do it. So it depends on you, your circumstances, and between you and the Lord, what you know in your heart is right. And because... At one point, I was like, well, I cannot smoke pot because I have uh, four children. And even though I still didn't think it was any big deal, it could affect the lives of those children in a negative way. For example, I had pro Child Protective Services show up one time because someone who hates me sent them over and made up a false allegation. I even had Child Protective Services come over and tell me. We've had a report made against you. I think you know who it's from. And I knew who they were talking about. And the guy said to me, he goes, uh, he goes, you know, I know it's total nonsense because I've looked into your case and I can see how this person is trying to like basically persecute you and make, make false allegations. And I said, yeah, it's a normal thing. I've been dealing with it for a long time. And here's what the guy said to me. He said, I just want to get this off my desk. So let's just get through it. Let's just go through the check checklist. Okay, so are you employed? Yeah, you know, what do you do? Blah, construction, blah, blah, blah. We go through this checklist. And he goes, uh, do you use any illegal drugs? And when he said that right then and there, I said, uh, yes. And, he, and he's like, 
And he goes, what illegal drugs do you use? And I said, well, I smoke a little bit of pot occasionally. And here's what the guy from Child Protective Services said. He said, thank you for being so honest. I'm not even going to write that down. He goes, I'm, he goes, thank, he goes, everybody lies. Everybody lies when I ask him this question. So see, I want you to understand <clears throat> at that moment in time, between the Lord and myself, I had a, a fiduciary duty to do what was right in the sight of God, to tell the truth. But what did that mean for, you know, my children? Well, did you know right then and there, they could have come and taken the kids and said, well, we're going to put your kids over in foster care simply for telling the truth over something that I think is a, is a complete non-issue. However, I let God be God and I told the truth. I said, yeah, I smoke a little bit of pot. And he's like, wow. Nobody ever tells the truth. He was in shock. <laughs> he was just in shock. And so he said, I'm not even going to write that down. Da, da, da. I'm closing out the case. Thank you very much. I know it's total nonsense, which it was. And so at that point, though, I had to reevaluate. And I had to say, you know what? Dude, I can't put my kids in that kind of jeopardy. That because I smoked a little bit of pot and I told the truth. Okay, we got to take your kids. So see... That, in my book, becomes sinful behavior because of the the huge effect it could have on the lives of four other kids. Well, my kids are grown and they're gone. They're in college now. Everybody's off doing their thing. And so, you know, but, but the point is, there's, at that time, I had to evaluate, well, this is not, this is not right. Like, this could adversely affect the well-being of four people. So I said, that's it. I'm not going to smoke any pot. And so there was, you know, there were times over those years, you know, where I had cussy raising kids where the issue would come up and it came up one other time. And I told the truth. I said, occasionally. And uh, so I had someone say, well, do you mind if we do a, a drug test on you? And I said, no, I don't care at all. And so they did a drug test and that was the end of it. And I never heard again from any of them. That was it. But I told the truth every single time. Every single time I told the truth. And it could have been, you know, something that was disastrous. However, the point I'm trying to make to you is whatever you do, you have to do it before God and all of us, between the rest of the world, between you and all of us. We're all part of the same body. So if it's okay between you and the Lord and you know it's okay, well then... Who cares if you have a drink? Who cares if you smoke a little bit of pot? Whatever. And see, people have been taught to get caught up in this legalism. That's what this, the system teaches you is legalism. Oh, you know why? Because you're, you're under the law just by being in a host body. You know that. The body is what's under the law, the host body. Jesus came in in a host body and died on a cross to not destroy the law, but to fulfill the law inside of you. So you are the fulfillment of the law. And so no, once you have the law fulfilled inside of you, you've been turned up, you've been converted. The record against you that the other team had, that the prosecutor has, has been wiped clean and they can't reattach themselves to you. Do you understand? You're free. And if the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. You're free. Okay, but also... Do not use your freedom in order to sin. And the Bible tells you that. Do not use your freedom in Christ as a, it, I think it even says the word cloak, as a cloak for sin. Because you can't do that either. That's not right either. I'm going to turn this heater down. It's starting to get a little cooky in here. One moment. Okay, so without any further ado, I'm going to call Steve up because I want to share this whole thing that happened with him where he got a white rock. And I want you to understand that it's metaphorically speaking, everybody gets a white rock that's been converted because that means <clears throat> that the judge has given you a white rock. Back in the old days, back in the times of Christ, and even before when you were brought before a council to decide your guilt, they would put out either a black rock or a white rock. And when they gave you a white rock, it means you're free to go. No, no nothing against you. So <clears throat> I found it interesting that the Lord had given me two halves of the same rock in Chinati. 
he told me to bind it together and it was a solid black rock bind it together and then he sent me to a place called black rock of all places and the rock that was black was bound together by a guy that owned a company called black rock and he had me go throw the black rock into the river off a bridge that had two x on the bridge and i heard the lord say it's all water under the bridge then he gave me a white rock <laughs> okay let's call steve okay here we go <laughs> This was one of the most exciting trips ever. Johnny. Steve, can you hear me? I can. Okay, I may sound like I'm yelling because I have a I have like this muffin over my ears. <laughs> so anyway, um just make hey, I so anyway, I've I've started the vid. I kind of told everybody what was going on in a general sense about how I don't want people living under the law and I don't want people thinking they're guilty when you've been converted. And I want everybody to have the freedom that I have and that you have recently come to understand even more, I believe. So anyway, so I got you on the phone. Say hi to everybody. This is Steve. Hello. Yep. So Steve, you were at you were at the Night Under the Stars, right? I sure was. So you were one of the participants when uh, I was videotaping the room and the whole camera turned the whole room to white light, yeah? I saw it with my own eyes, yeah. Yeah, so Steve was a, uh, he was a participant in the, the little arc building that said T-Rex on every single board that was bought by Jim and Karen, and then we remodeled it. And uh, the Lord told me I had to do metallic epoxy floors on it, which I, I kind of kicked in. <laughs> anyway, the Lord got me to do it. Anyway, and because of that, uh, the sun came through the doors, and at a certain moment, uh, the whole building, as I was videotaping it, turned to just solid white light. Does that sound right? Yes, that's exactly right. Cool. Okay, so so now I want to talk to you about it, and I want you to talk to everybody, because you're the witness. I mean, you I'm trying to relate you to all these other people that I've been reading these comments and how, you know, they're just so grateful because, you know, their their minds locked them into, oh, I'm not worthy. So why don't you just tell everybody just, you know, before you came, what was, you know, you don't have to get into all kinds of personal details, but just tell everybody what's going on in your head and and then just we'll get to the whole story. Sure. Well, I, I, I believe we're at the end of time. end of time and and i i for the last few months about three months i just can't get over this uh this feeling that i i have to do something to fix this situation that I'm, i just don't feel worthy of of being saved and what i've learned from the last uh 72 hours after being over at your place and seeing what happened i i thought a lot about this and and it, 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 it's like this, it, in this world, if I'm driving a car and I hit somebody and it's my fault, we would go to court and the judge would say, okay, Steve, you were found, it was your fault, so therefore you have to pay, you have to pay for damages to fix this. You have to fix this situation because that's the way this world works. But... This weekend, after seeing what happened, uh, it's like we, I turned from the Most High and fell into this world. And I, I separated myself from God. But, but grace is a hard one for me because he came into this world. He came into this world and paid my fine for me. Yep. He, gave, he gives a free gift, the the gift of salvation, it's grace, and it's only by his stripes that we're healed. It's its nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. So that feeling that you're having, that you've been having, or you were having before you showed up here, um, you, you understand a lot of people suffer from that, right? I, yes, I do. I do, absolutely. So when you got here, um, and so I'm just going to kind of run, I'm going to help everybody kind of run through it just real quick. So they understand that they are also recipients of the same white stone that you are, but you just happen to be here and, and the Lord wanted to use you as an example to help others. 
So, oh, absolutely. So you would. So so here's the thing. So having been around a little bit, you've seen a lot of miracles when we hang out. Yeah or no? All the time. Yeah, yeah it's like a, be, you recognize that the gift of miracles is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? It's, yes, it's written in first Corinthians 12. So anyway, so now let me just tell everybody what I was suffering from before you got here. So here's what happens to me when someone's coming down to visit. I just get like, Oh Lord, you know, every, we see miracles on a daily basis. Corey and Zach and I, and the people in my hemisphere, we get to see the glory of God on a daily weekly basis. It's normal. Now it's just normal. And so when someone's coming down to visit, I go through sometimes this anxiety of like, okay, Lord, please don't not do any miracles. Okay. <laughs> Cause that would be super weird <laughs> because we're so used to miracles. Like if somebody comes down and you don't do a miracle for them, then it, it would just be weird to me. It just seems awkward. So anyway, before Steve got here, Corey and Zach and I, we stood in a circle and we prayed corp corporately and I said, guys, let's all pray together and let's just ask God for, you know, whatever you want to talk about. And so we each did. And then part of my prayer was, Lord, look, Steve's coming down. The guy's got a heart of gold. Please give Steve what he needs from this trip. Please manifest yourself to him. Please let Steve get to see you in the equation while he's here. That's what I'm asking. Please let him see you. And so, you know, so I try to put that to rest in my mind because I'm like, please don't let him come here and not see something cool. That would just suck. So anyway, so Steve gets here and just, you know, very quickly the first day, whatever, uh, we see each other, hang out a little bit at the house and, you know, have dinner and stuff, whatever. I tell him, yeah, I know he's been on a long, Steve, Steve's a pilot, so he's got some crazy ass uh, schedule stuff. And I, so I said, you know what, why don't you go back to your hotel get some sleep and we'll pick you up in the morning. And we'll, so we had all day Saturday to hang out. He came in Friday afternoon. And then, so Saturday was our big day just to hang out. And I wasn't even sure what we we're going to do. And so, so that morning uh, I got up and I was, we were all praying and, and I, and I, I, I heard the Lord say, clear Isabel, take Steve to the cemetery and give him a white rock and you need to do it right away. That's what I heard. And so the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. The night I got saved, Michael looked at me and said, Jonathan, that little voice you hear, that's God speaking to you. Learn to trust his voice. So sometimes I don't really instantly, I'm just being honest. Okay. I'm being 100% open book with all of y'all. When I hear the Lord tell me something, most of the times I'm like, okay, I heard you say this and then I'll act on it. Um, but there are times where I hear the Lord tell me to do something and I'm like, uh, <laughs> okay, I heard you say this, but, you know, would you mind confirming it? You know, the Bible says, test the spirits, make sure they're of God. I don't want some, you know, side, side door enemy attack trying to come at me and tell me something. And then I act on it and I find out it wasn't from the Lord God. So sometimes what I will do is I'll say, Lord, I heard you say, you want me to take all my skydiving gear to the desert, including my wind blades and my whole LZ, which is pretty weird. You want me to go to the desert with all my skydiving stuff and jump into the desert. And I don't even know where it's going, where I'm going. <laughs> I was like, okay, I could really use a, a confirmation on that. And that's when he walked me into the art gallery and, uh, and any of the y'all that know that story, you know, that testimony, you know, go look it up. Anyway, so there are times when the Lord tells me stuff and I need a confirmation, but the Lord's really been working on me a lot lately. Just trust me when I tell you to do something, please. It's okay. You're hearing my voice clearly, like, you know, go ahead and act on it. And so Steve was one of those, <laughs> one of those moments. And I was like, you want, okay. You, so you, I just heard you, you want me to take Steve down to the, to the cemetery where the Gallagher headstone is. And you want me to give him a white rock. I'm like, that's so cool. That's so awesome, man. I get to take Steve down there and give him a white rock. And then I'm like, okay, Corey, you heard that, right? And Corey's standing right there. And so Corey's a total witness. Cause I'm just speaking back to God a little bit like Steven and, Braveheart, you know, it looks a little weird, I'm sure, to some people, but it's what I do. I'm like, hey, I heard you say this. So that you want me to go down there and take Steve and give him a white rock from you? Okay, cool. Let's do it. And so then I I I I go get Steve at his hotel 
which was right up the street, and I picked him up, and I brought him uh, over to the house to pick up Corey and Zach. Like I said, we're real close. And so those guys were ready, and we got Steve in, in, in the vehicle, and we started driving. We're just all kind of kicking it around. But, Steve, no one had told you where we were going or anything, correct? That's correct. Okay, now, <laughs> so, okay, let me let me see if I have this in the folder. So here we are now. We picked up Steve, and now we're driving. We're on our way down to the cemetery, but Steve doesn't even know where we're going and uh, this is when so I'm, I'm going to the folder right now to see if I've got a picture of what your screenshot that you sent me or that you showed me. Let's see. Or it's in the, I'll tell you what, Steve, could, can you text me right now a, scre a screenshot? So, so while Steve's texting that to me, let me just tell you all briefly what happened. So Steve's, Steve's sitting in the back seat and um, Steve sticks his hand between me, uh, me and uh, I think Zach was in the front seat because Zach's. The big, the bigger guy needs more legroom. So anyway, this hand comes through the space from the back seat, and Steve is holding his cell phone, and he goes, "Here, check this out." Okay, now watch this. Now this is crazy. Yeah, here it is. So Steve's like, "Hey, check this out," and here's what he shows me. So here it is. He shows me this. Okay, let's let it. There it is. It says, "It says east to west home inspections." Okay, now, now here I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom out on this because I've got I've got a picture in here of my uh, I took of Steve when we went down there, and I want to show you that. So Steve had no idea we're going down to Gallagher, which is where the Lord took me to show me when I was suffering a little bit from. Oh man, I hope I haven't done this to upset you or, you know, like, you know, like all of us suffer from, we all suffer from it. Just admit it. I'm not good enough. Maybe I did this. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. Everybody suffers from it. Well, one day, oh, quite a while back, the Lord told me in front of Corey, Jonathan, you and Corey are going for a ride. Just start driving. <laughs> and I told Corey, I said, Corey, uh, dude, the Lord's telling me we're going for a drive. Now, this is all documented. Everything's in the collect files. You can go look at it. So just I want to paint a picture for you real quick. So Corey's with me, and we're out in my vehicle, and we're driving, We're going to grab a taco or something. And, and I hear the Lord say, Jonathan, I'm going to take you somewhere. You and Corey start driving. And I look over at Corey, and I'm just like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is really weird, Corey. But, man, the Lord's telling me we're going somewhere just start driving. I was like, this is really weird, man. I've never done this one. This is kind of weird. I'm just, he's telling in front of a witness, just start driving. I'm going to drive you somewhere. Stop and think about that for a sec. I was kind of like, wait. <laughs> so I start driving. I'm just, we were on Broadway and I start driving one direction and going up the street and just like not really paying attention. Next thing you know, I'm making a turn. Then next thing you know, I've been driving about eh, 10 minutes and then I, I just hear the Lord say, take a right here. And all of a sudden, I kind of like, you know, have y'all ever driven somewhere where you're thinking about stuff and you're not even sure how you got to where you're at? <laughs> you're like, what was, was I asleep in a trance? Long story short, I hear the Lord say, take a right here. And I'm like, oh, wow, Corey. So the Lord's saying, take a right here. And we, we take a right. And then I hear the Lord say, take another right. And I take a right. And the street that I'm on is, it's making a T. It's like dead ending, but you can go to the right or to the left. But we're in the middle of a giant freaking cemetery. It's huge, a giant. And I, and I look up and I hear the Lord say, pay attention now. And it says St. Anthony. So I'm on St. Anthony Street. And it's basically dead ending to a T. It goes right or to the left, crossroads. So you either go right or to the left, but it's the cemetery. So death is right in front of you. <laughs> so you're driving into death, all these headstones. And I hear the Lord say, like, pull over, this is it. And I, so I pull over and I get out of the vehicle and I start walking. I'm like, weird, I see one crypt, it's a bug. I can tell the whole thing is a bug upside down. So I photograph it and I hear the Lord tell me, pay attention to the headstones. And so I look and I'm like, okay, all the headstones are this way. And, and then I hear the Lord say, look at the direction the headstones are facing. So Corey's in the truck and I walk up to the window. Okay, Corey, what direction? Is the, is the truck facing? What direction is that according to the compass on the truck? And he says, it says due west, like directly west. And I'm like, okay. So the other way is directly east. 
And so as I start walking towards the east, you cannot, Steve, can you see any headstone names at all or no? None. That's a good answer. None. None going to the east. Yeah, as you're walking towards the east, as you're walking kind of against all the headstones, there's one headstone and what does it say? To Gallagher. Gallagher. Okay, so imagine you're me, What? maybe two years ago, whatever it was. I don't know how long ago it was, but this is my first trip to to the cemetery that the Lord's going to take me on a drive somewhere. We end up in the cemetery, blah, blah. And so I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. So all the heads, everyone that's dead is planted facing west. Well, that's where the sun goes down, right? And I'm thinking, well, that's pretty fascinating. And then... I see one headstone come into view and I'm like, weird. That one is, you can read the guy's name, but he's, he's facing the wrong way. I mean, how weird is that? I mean, and I look at it and I I hear the Lord say, look up the name of that person. Like the name's Gallagher. All it says is Gallagher, right? Yes. Okay. So on that side of the headstone, all it says is Gallagher. And I hear the Lord say, look up the meaning of Gallagher. And I look it up and it means descendant of a foreign helper. And right then the Lord says, Jonathan, as far as the east is from the west, I have removed your sins from you. And I'm like, (laughs) you know, like, "Ah, oh my God. Now, if y'all don't understand what an insane miracle that is, that the Lord drove you to a dead end, uh, like a crossroads where you either live, right is life, death is left is death. And he has me see and understand this. And then the Lord says to you, as far as the east is from the west, I have removed your sins from you. Imagine that. That's a that's a world-changing moment. And I had that moment. And I, I documented that moment for all of you guys. And since then, the Lord's taken me down to that cemetery, like, I don't know, four more times. And every single time is some insane miracle. And they've all been documented. They've all been put on YouTube. Every one of them. So when Steve is coming down and I don't, I mean, I'm hoping that the Lord's just going to do something cool while he's here, just so Steve can experience the Lord right there, just knowing that the Lord's there with you. And Steve leans over the seat and he shows me east to west. And he doesn't even know that we're driving to that cemetery. Let me show you a picture now. I'm, I'm going to show him the picture right here. Uh, so there's Steve and me at the cemetery and he's holding up his phone and right behind him, it says Gallagher. So, and right on his phone, it says from East to West. Now, can you imagine the Lord sending you down to a cemetery and giving you a white stone off the headstone that says Gallagher? Do you know what that means? And so Steve's look, Steve, you, Everything I'm saying is 100% true, right? Absolutely. 100%. Okay, and so, hang on. Let me turn this volume up. I'm, I want to make sure I got... Okay, so yeah, everything I'm saying is 100% true, right? Yes, but you know what? I, I, I would like to tell you about the setup to this. You're, you're leaving kind of this... Okay, out. so okay, so Steve's going to jump in. Okay, go. go. Yeah. Okay, uh, not to cut you off. So no, 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 no. Please, it's, please. It's important that we had talked about me coming down while and uh, about three days prior to we, we finalized the plans right and i was i was on the phone with you in my house at the same time i was switching insurance companies for my house and i had to have a, a, what's called a four-point inspection done so i had paid a guy to come out who i got online i hit online selected one he came out because it, it fit in he was he was doing the inspection when i was on the phone with you now these things you're the lightning rod for this john what it, it's not me that you're the lightning rod and all this stuff goes through and if you remember the guy got done with the inspection and i said hey john i said let me call you back i gotta i gotta pay the guy and you go no problem no problem so we, we closed the phone and i paid the guy through a credit card right over the phone i still don't know the name of the company i, I didn't know the name of the company i paid my credit card and he goes we'll, we'll send you an email receipt and i said that's fine no problem so the next day, the next day, I open my email and there it is, their logo on top of the, the bill, east to west. And I went, oh my gosh, because I'd seen the other. Oh, wow. So, the- <laughs> so uh, as soon as we got in the car 
and you guys are saying, man, I hope you see a miracle. I hope a miracle comes. I'm going, oh, speaking of miracles, look what happened the other day when we were on the phone. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, hang on one sec. Hey, hang on one sec. Hey, hey, Zach, I'm in here recording a video, and I'm getting a lot of outside noise banging through the door. Yes, sir. I'm recording a video right now. I'm live. Bye. Okay. Hey, Steve. Yep. Okay. Hey, on one sec. There. Uh, Bowie's having a little training session outside. <laughs> it's getting a little rowdy. Anyway. Hey. Okay. So yeah. So you were okay. Okay, guys. Listen to this. Let me try and explain this one more time, or let Steve explain one more time. So Steve. You were hope we're we're all hoping you get to see a miracle and and we're like man we just hope you get to experience some like supernatural and then you say oh speaking of supernatural and that's when you pulled that's why you pulled up your phone in my car while we were driving down there but you didn't even know it right. is that right no because I'm used to I was thinking hey look it's, I used a company called East to West and I'm going hey the Lord said he's going to separate our sins from the east to the west and you go. Your eyes got as big as saucers. That's right. So, it, <laughs> so check it out, everybody. It was probably more of a stunner for me because I'm a, I'm over here at my house saying, Lord, please, just please manifest yourself to Steve. So please just, you know, he's such an awesome guy. Please just let him see you in the equation while he's here. I, I know he's only here for like a day. And so then... <laughs> right after that, Steve's in the car and we're heading out. And he's like, oh, yeah, hey, speaking of miracles, you want to see a miracle? And he shows me east to west and I'm like, ah! I'm like, what? So I'm in the car driving and he shows that to me and I'm like, wait. And I'm like, and I'm looking at Zach and Corey and I'm like, hey, did did you, does, does he know where we're going? And then Corey, I think, looked at you and says, like, you don't have any clue where you're going, right? And I think at that point, Steve looked at us like, and I was like, what are we going like on a trip to the country I'm not coming back from or something? <laughs> right? Is that what we, is that does that sound about right? Yeah, I was a little nervous at that point, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. But it was so weird because it was so bizarre. We were like, wait a minute, wait. Steve's like, yeah, speaking of miracles, and he goes, check this out, east to west. And I'm like, what? How do you know where we're taking you? I'm like, Corey, Zach, which one of you guys gave it away? And neither one of them told Steve. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah, we're taking you down to the cemetery. The Lord told me we had to pick you up and go right there. He said, take you right away. Like, don't go anywhere else except there first. And then Steve's handing us the east to the west. And I'm just like, I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> and so... We go down there, the Lord gives you your thing, you have a little moment. So, would you say, so now this is for everybody, Steve, that suffers from the, maybe I need to do this syndrome, maybe I need to do that syndrome, maybe I'm not good enough syndrome, maybe I shouldn't have done this syndrome. Can you say that 100% you know that the Lord God, the creator of all things, handed you a white stone? handed me a white stone it was it, it was the story couldn't be more perfect it couldn't be more there couldn't be more of a miracle for me and but that miracle wasn't for me that was for everyone thank because you thank you exact thank you that's exactly correct the miracle steve was a recipient of that particular moment however the miracles for everyone it's for you the miracles for all of you guys. It's not just for me, the Lord answering my prayer. And it's not just for the Lord saying, hey, Steve, I know you've been suffering from this because for the past three months uh, he's been, you know, struggling with that. Maybe I need to do something else, you know, to be able to go home or. But was that all put to rest for the most part? Because <laughs> I completely, I am completely at rest with this and I pray Everyone else listening to this, my voice is at rest. There you trust go. in him, trust in him, and that's all we got to do. Yeah, it's the work he did on the cross. It's nothing you do. It's like, but but here's the reality. So the Bible says, when you believed on him, and I want people to understand, when you believe, see, when I show y'all a dead sheep, that's really, the, it's an image of the virgin, but when I turn it the other way, and you see, wow, the virgin is actually a dead sheep. That's crazy. Why would it be a dead sheep? Well, because 
the guy speaking to you is the guy that the Lord would would prop up to be an end time harbinger to show you the simplicity of Christ that's been hidden from you by the churches, by the preachers, by the mainstream. They think they want you to go to church and think you're fine. But if you don't know the truth, then how did the truth set you free? Because the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The word free is eleutheros. Eleuthero, I mean, isn't it crazy? The night I got saved, I was with Eleuthera, the female form of Eleuthero. And when I walked in, when I was trying to go through that door, Eleuthera was saying, don't open the door, they'll kill us. Because she knew that the people that I was in the high speed chase were at the end of that alley. And I said, I have to go. I have to open the door to know the truth. So I was willing to die. Willing to die. And I said, you don't have to go with me. Well, that's bigger than I thought because that represents the end of the world. Like those of us that are ready to die to ourselves and leave, then we're counted worthy to go. But those, you know, she's trying to stop me from going out that door. And I, when I did, I overcame death. I was like, I don't care. They can kill me. I don't care. I want to know the truth. This spirit that's guiding me, I want to know the truth. I've got to know the truth. And I opened the door. And then when I walked out, the the walkway turned to a set of stairs and boom. And then Michael said, pray with me, my brother. It, the rest of it's history. So here we are. It's the end of the world. Here's my brother, Steve, who I have come to love and adore. And, and this guy had the perfect experience in order to help you, whoever you are watching this video. Steve, you're not a little goody two-shoes, are you? <laughs> I know, I know Steve. Steve's a gregarious... He he's a he's a kind-hearted individual, but it, Steve, do you have a couple drinks here and there? Sure do. Yeah, so it's not a problem, guys, to drink. It's a problem to to drink if drinking is destroying your life and destroying other people's lives. Then then that's an issue. I I just got through a nice long chat before I called you, Steve, about you know me smoking pot or whatever. You know, like is is there a time when it is sinful? Well, there was a time when I was raising four kids where CPS uh, asked me, you know, do you use any illegal drugs? And I told them, well, I smoke pot. And they were like, oh, my God, thank you for telling the truth. <laughs> they were shocked that I told the truth. They were like, oh, my God, I can't believe you told the truth. And the guy said, well, I'm not even going to write that down. But I told the truth. And the point I was making is back then when I was raising four kids, you know, to be someone that smoked pot, it could affect, you know, four kids because they could – take four kids right then and there to foster care if they wanted to. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I'm trying to make the point to everybody so you understand. Drinking is okay. Smoking pot is okay. There's things that people think are sins that you need to just rethink it and you need to do it in the light of God, in front of God, and saying, well, you know, it's this is what the situation is. Do I think it's a sin to smoke pot? Not at all. Do I think there's circumstances where I think it could be sinful behavior? I do. So. There it is. And that's the best I can do for you guys as far as, you know, just being open, transparent. So you guys. Those things become your idols and those things become your, take your life over, then it's no good. Absolutely. And, and, and here's the other thing. I know there's people that suffer from pain issues and people that suffer from other issues, whether or not, because I want people to understand this. It's okay to be on meds. A lot of people think, oh, I can't even let my child take medication. That's crazy. It's okay to let your child take, like, I know people that don't want their kids to take antibiotics. Like, oh my God, they're evil. That's, that's silliness. And I want to make sure people know that because I found out about someone that was not taking their child at all to the doctor. And when you need an antibiotic and you're a child and you need to get over the hump, you need to be able to go to the doctor. So uh, I'm going to make sure that people know that that's my stance because I'm not going to let people use the ministry as an excuse not to do that. Okay. All right. Now, Steve, <laughs> what is it you want to just anything you want to like just tell everybody before you know any stuff before uh, we wrap up? Uh, no, not really. Just just trust in, in Jesus. It's I'm the least worthy, and I don't know why He would show me. Uh oh, hang on, hang on, guys. I pressed uh, Steve. Hang on. <laughs> uh huh. Hang on. That's all. Just. They changed my phone. Changed. Uh oh. Uh -oh. 
No, that's me. So in, on my phone, this is the weirdest thing. My phone changed the other day and every button that was on the right moved to the left and everyone that was on the left moved to the right. I'm like, what the hell is this? My, I'm serious. All the buttons on controls on my phone, they move from the left to the right and the ones on the right moved to the left. It was, I was like, what the hell is going on? I mean, doesn't that kind of, that kind of freaks me out. Yeah, yeah, since that's my ministry and now all my buttons. Anyway, so I'm sorry, Steve. You were just saying trust in Jesus. Keep going. No, I just, I'm just saying I'm the least worthy. Why the Lord used me to do to get a white stone and all that, I am nothing special. I am, believe me, my life was in up the grab. And I'm the least worthy. But he showed me, and he's using me to show you. There you go. And I just think he did. I thank the Lord that he did. There you go, because that's it. That, that's That's the whole message that, yeah. Here's the point. None of us are worthy. There you go. No one's worthy for what he did on the cross to save us after we were the ones that turned our faces away from him. Remember that. While you were yet my enemies, I saved you. You know, like I reached out to the one I tried to destroy. So, yeah, and that's what we all do. We reach out to the one we tried to destroy and he saves us. So it's nothing you did. So accept the free gift of God and it is a gift lest any man should boast. So there it is. All right. Well, Steve, thanks for letting me uh, crash you today a little bit. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Thank you, John. Oh, yeah, man. I love you, bro. All right. I'm going to I'm gonna wrap it up and uh, just do the next thing I got to do. <laughs> All right, brother. That's it. God bless. All right. Bye. All right, guys. So there you have it. So now, okay, now. Here's another thing. <laughs> this is really awkward. So when I hear the Lord tell me to do something, <clears throat> grab, take all your skydiving gear to the desert. I'm going to show you where you're going to jump. Do you know how many miracles I got to see that I got to share with you guys because I did what he said? Now, I will admit I needed some confirmation on that. Not just once. Not just twice, but he finalized my confirmations when he walked me into the art gallery. And when I when I was praying, do y'all do y'all mind if I keep you here for just like another five ten minutes just to share this one thing because this is so crazy. I was really stressed out when the Lord told me you got to go to the desert and take your parachute and all your skydiving gear. You're gonna jump into the desert. I was I was like, what? What? First question. How do I get out of the desert? <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure I can land it. I'm pretty good on being able to hit my target landing. And I was like, okay, well, if I land in the desert, um, you know, it's a big desert. How do I get out of there? So that would mean... I would need like helicopter support, you know, for extraction, you know, helicopter come land, pick you up, get you out of the desert, <laughs> that type of thing. So anyway, and then I was thinking, well, you know, I have my motorcycle and my trailer. And if I know where the LZ is more or less, well, I could drive my motorcycle and leave it in the desert, you know, right there. And when I land, then I have my motorcycle to get out of the desert. And then I can always go back, get my vehicle, bring my vehicle, hook up the trailer, put the bike on, whatever, you know, and just it, it'll be able to figure it all out. It's no big deal. However, to be going to the desert and not knowing where you're going to jump out in Big Bend. <laughs> I was like, uh, OK, sounds cool. Sort of. Um, so anyway, so when he told me that I struggled for sure. and then. When I was really struggling with it, I was praying a lot. Now, I don't know about you, but praying a lot is a good idea when you're not sure what to do. Because the Bible says, and I, I say this back to God, I, I'll say, Lord, the Bible declares, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all men liber liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to you. And also, in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct your steps. I want to be obedient, but I'm not sure about what to do exactly. Because 
I know I heard you and I know you've shown me in a couple other ways that are a little nebulous. Like Kat got to see some of the other ways the Lord was telling me to go to the desert. I'd say, Kat, check this out. What do you think? I'd send her, I was just asking this and here's what he showed me. And, but I still wasn't convinced. One of those things was just for the record, I said, Lord, if you really want me to skydive into the desert, then I'm going to open this book and it's somehow going to show me. And I opened up at the source and it said, in the middle of nowhere, sand and rock. <laughs> and I was like, well, that sounds like the desert pretty much. Hang on one sec, folks. One sec. Anyway, so even though I, 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 I said, Lord, I'm going to open this book and it's going to tell me that you want me to go skydive into the desert in Big Bend. And it said sand and rock in the middle of nowhere. That's what, so I was like, wow, that's pretty conclusive, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but if the Lord was telling you to do it and you said, okay, when I open this book, somehow you're going to tell me in the desert and you open it up, it says in the middle of nowhere, uh, sand and rock. And you're like, wow, that's crazy. I didn't see the word desert, but sand and rock in the middle of nowhere. I was like, so I wasn't sure. I'm just being honest. I was like, well, it sure seems like it. So anyway, I was praying a lot. That's the point. And while I was praying, I'm like, Lord, God, help me out. And some old lady just comes and stops in the middle of an intersection, like where people are coming off a highway. And she stops to talk to me. And I'm facing the opposite direction. And I'm thinking, lady, what are you doing? I mean... You're gonna you're gonna end up causing a wreck, and she she said, hey, you know, she's very old. She's in her mid 80s, and she said, could you please show me how to get to tell me how to get to Fort Sam Houston? Well, I can't tell her through my window while she's blocking up a busy intersection. <laughs> and I was like, I said, ma'am, why don't you just pull over and I'll come get in front of you and you can follow me over there. I'll turn on my hazard lights and you just get behind me and, I, and I'll drive you straight over there. That was the easiest way to, you know, help her out and not have people get killed coming off the highway. And so I did that. I drove her all the way over there. I got her over. The, by the way, she was about 10 miles away. <laughs> she was way off. So I drive her over there and I said, it's right there. You go through those gates. And she was very nice. Next thing you know, I turn. I get on a street called Ritterman. I'm driving up Ritterman and I'm saying, Lord, you really want me to take all my gear, even the wind blades and i just said the word wind blades i said even the wind blades and i just made the right hand turn onto austin highway off them in road go look at it yourself there's an art gallery right there and as soon as i turn there's these wind blades that are just flapping in the wind now and they're not in the right place it's just not a place that they would be that that neighborhood doesn't let you do stuff like that anyway so i said even the wind blades and then there's these two wind blades. And the Lord says, go in the place with the wind blades. I'm licking you in the eye. That's the only reason I ended up in Chinati is because I said, even the play, even the wind blades, go in the place with the wind blades. And I said, Lord, you want me to go into that building right there? I'm not even sure what it is. And it says art gallery. And I said, you want me to go in there? Go in there. Go in the place with the wind blades. So I said, okay. So I, I opened the door. I stick my head in right then. Some guy's like, hey, how's it going? I'm so-and-so. Yeah, it's my gallery. And he's like, yeah, come on in. I said, yeah, I've never, I've never been in, but I've driven by a lot. And he goes, yeah, come on in. He goes, yeah, I specialize. I specialize in artists that do West Texas landscapes like Big Bend. <laughs> <laughs> so the lord drove me to an art gallery where a man the first thing he said is i specialize in artists that do big bend the desert where the lord god's sending me telling me to go and i'm like oh so now right then and there i know i have to go to big bend and there's a big painting on the wall like the main painting and i hear the lord say look at that painting and i'm like and it's a shepherd He's leading sheep in Big Bend in the desert, a shepherd leading sheep. And I go over and I look at it and I hear the Lord say, I want you to go to Chinati 
I want you to go listen. And so I heard, look at the name of the artist. The artist's name was a gold plaque. And I asked the guy, I said, do you mind if I photograph this? Because art galleries sometimes don't want you to photograph. And he goes, yeah, go ahead. And I photographed the picture and I photographed the name of the artist. The name was Melvin Warren. I'll never forget it. And then I heard the Lord say, look up the name Melvin and Warren. Melvin means chief and Warren means watchman. <laughs> That's what I was like. Oh my God, it's true. The Lord is sending me to the desert. This is like a story in the Bible. It's like, go to the desert. <laughs> it's like, okay. And that's when I was like, okay, I got to go to the desert. I got to do what he said. And I did. Did y'all see all the miracles? The rock that was split in half, put back together. He had told me, put that rock back together. And I'm like, what? A rock that was split directly. It represents you and me. It represents all of us. We were rock. We were all on the rock. We were all living stones. And we got split in half by coming here. So now we're in a system of duality where you have a mind that's du dualistic. Good and evil in the same host body. You're like the rock that got split in half and cast down. And the Lord told me in that in that riverbed, Jonathan, pick up those two rocks out of a hundred trillion rocks. The Lord said, pick up those two rocks. Those two? You mean out of the hundred trillion rocks? Those two. And I picked them up and the Lord said, now put them together. And I was like, put them together? You know what? Can I just show you that little clip right now? And then I'll get to the final part of this. Because I have something I need I may I need y'all's help with. So hang on. Okay, guys. Yeah, let me let me share this with you. Just because, guys, this is like history right here. This is the guy that the Lord God would show what it means to be on the rock. And I always do this because it's taking two halves of the things that have been made opposite now and putting them together. Because we were on the rock, but then we got rolled you know, like rock and roll or, you know, like the rolling stones. We are the stones of fire. When it talks about Lucifer, thou wast in Eden, thou walkest up and down amidst the stones of fire. Why do you think there's a band called the Rolling Stones with a tongue sticking out of a mouth? Just like the dead sheep with the tongue sticking out of the mouth, the Rolling Stones. And we became those Rolling Stones. Now, watch this. Here's the testimony. I'm going to play this and then I'm going to play... After I did the jump, my LZ was split directly in half. And the Lord was showing me that is a representation of the whole system. Like it was a desolate system. It's two halves of one thing. They got split in half. And Jonathan, I'm using you to show everybody what it means to put everything back together, to put you back together, to put you and your spirit back together. So you're reborn in Christ. That's what this is all about. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Here is Jonathan's testimony. So here it is. Oh, wait, hang on one sec. Okay, so here we go. So here it is. So as I was walking, I heard the Lord say, look down, and I looked down. And, and I, I put these back down, but I looked down, and I saw these two rocks. I looked down. You see those two rocks right there? Now, imagine you're, just take a moment and imagine that you're me. Just pretend that the Lord had told you to go to the desert. He, he had to show you something. So he sends me to the desert with all my skydiving gear. He tells me he's going to show me exactly where he wants me to skydive into the desert. After I get there and I set up in a place called Chinati, which is like a little oasis. It's like a little garden of Eden in the middle of the desert. He tells me, walk down this canyon. <laughs> I was like, okay. So he's going to make my LZ, my landing zone, in the middle of a creek, like a, a dried out riverbed in the middle of this desert canyon. Do you know how treacherous that is? <laughs> It's insane. Well, okay. Here we go. Here it is. These two rocks. I looked down. I mean, I heard the Lord say, look down. And I looked down and I heard the Lord say, pick up these two rocks. And I picked them up. 
And this is unbelievable. I mean, you got to be kidding me. Two rocks out of all these rocks. I'm sitting here looking at my own video going, God bless this poor dude, man. His brain must have shattered. It did. My brain was, ah! Look at all the rocks. Look at all the freaking rocks, you guys. It's all rocks. And the Lord is walking me down that riverbed to give me Two halves of the same rock and has me, tells me, put them together now. Can you imagine the shock when I'm, I'm like, they fit together? They're two halves of the same rock and I'm the guy trying to show the world 100% nylon turns to no lion. If you turn the word nylon upside down and backwards, it becomes N-O-L-Y-N. Remember the night I got saved? Well, there is the manifestation in the middle of a desert canyon. Can't fake that. Uh-huh. Clucks false prophet. No. <laughs> so anyway, there it is. Now watch this. Here we go. Let's just do this real quick. Oh, come on. They were split. These, this rock was two separate rocks sitting on the ground in a riverbed with trillions of rocks. And I heard the Lord say, look down in my spirit. And then I saw these and I heard the Lord say, pick up those two rocks. I just burst into tears. I didn't know what else to do. How in the world? Now, don't forget, I, uh, of course, a year or so later, whatever the time frame was, when the Lord told me, I want you to bind those rocks together with silver. I had a silver coin. A guy melted it down, just like a regular silver, whatever, you know, like whatever, Lady Liberty, silver, dollar. And I was over at a random place talking to a friend of mine that does vinyl. And this guy shows up and he actually does jewelry that's all rock he does jewelry that incorporates mainly rocks that's what he does and he showed up at the place i was having my car worked on and he's the guy that when he showed up my friend said hey that's the guy that's got the coffee and i he had given me some coffee and i'm like that's the guy that's got the coffee he had really good coffee and i was like hey can i get a pound a pound of that coffee that you sell and he goes yeah and he goes well really my main thing is i i do i do jewelry and it's mainly rocks <laughs> like what and the lord just told me i want you to bind that rock together you know like you would kind of like a jeweler would put a bezel around it make it to where the two halves are bound together with silver and i'll tell you what to do with it later okay now do you know what this all means i do it means that the cumulative sum of God's people, the Israelites, which I am one of. And if you've been found, see, because he goes out in search of his lost sheep. He goes out and searches for his lost sheep. When you get converted, you become Yisrael. You're Jacob before you get converted because you're like one of the twins. You know, like you have a, a good twin and a bad twin, like Esau and Jacob. The Lord hated Esau, but he loved Jacob. What about Cain and Abel? Cannibal. How did Cain kill Abel? Hmm, let me see. Oh, could it be with a rock? Yeah, Cain killed Abel with a rock. Rock and roll. So they've been destroying us since the beginning of time. Okay, now. Here we go. Hang on, so guys, my phone just keeps popping off. So anyway, so now let me show you one more two more clips of the desert. It's kind of cool so we can just kind of take this thing and watch. Okay, so this is I look at the hat I'm wearing right here. Now I'm going to show you another post jump. Now watch this. Size up. Put this on please. Pick them in my. I want you to pick 
picked up was a rock that had been split in half, the size of a 50 cent piece. That's impossible. Look at all those rocks. <laughs> How bizarre is this? So now I want you to look at that. That's my LZ. When I left to go meet my plane, I had to drive an entire hour from Chinati, which is out in the, it's in the sticks. It's in the desert. I drove an hour to a place called Presidio, which is on the border of Mexico. I had a pilot fly over to Presidio and meet me. I got in his airplane while I was doing that. That canyon you're looking at, where I had put my entire LZ, flash flooded. I think there was five people sitting there waiting that you know knew I was going to do this. <laughs> They're like, we're going to get to see someone die today. <laughs> so they were sitting there and they told me the entire riverbed flash flooded and in the desert when it flash floods guys it's not just water it's like a slushy i mean have you ever seen a, a desert flash flood it's not just water it's sand and water and rocks it's like a slushy it is insane so anyway after the jump i came up about 20 yards short of my LZ and my cabin was behind me. So there was no point in me going all the way to my, my tarp. Cause that means I'd have to walk 20 yards further just to look at my tarp, which I came up 20 yards short, but Hey, I'm, I'm in the Canyon and I'm alive. <laughs> and so I walked back to my, uh, my little cabin and I dropped all my gear, my parachute and everything. Then I went back down there to check it out. And I was like, Oh, what? Look at the two triangles. Now think of one one eye that's clean, one eye that's dirty. Because in the system, you have one eye that's clean represented by a triangle that goes up and the other eye, one eye that's dirty that goes to the pit. Can you imagine a flash flood where water went over both sides of my tarp? It left residue on one triangle that's filthy and there's a line right down the middle and it's, it's clean. The one side is clean, one dirty, like the pit, one clean like heaven angel and a demon within the host body representation and on the side that's clean there's a clear running stream and in the bible it talks about the stream you know on either side of the 12 the 12 trees is a clear running stream that's insane okay let me prove it so you get to see it here it is i'm here to pick up the lz <laughs> And I'm freaking out. One half is completely clean. So the the dirt right here is only from me walking over it. See the these these this dirt is only me walking over it. The other half is completely dirty. And look look at the dirt, how it's concentrated to the part of the one triangle. Like look. Look at the triangle on that half. It's, it's, you can see the triangle, it's all dirt. And then right down the middle, straight in the middle of the X is a line. And then the other half is clean. That's just crazy. <laughs> okay, so there it is. There's proof. Oh, here's a video that my pilot Why made. You don't understand. Wait, here's a video you that, know? oh, sorry guys. Here's a video that my pilot made. Um. You see these this green line right here? You see the that's a riverbed in the desert. Well, that's like probably two canyons away from where I was supposed to land. But here's just a short little proof from my pilot. Here it is. This right here, that's my canopy right here. And you can see that I'm heading away from this and I'm going over a mountain ridge to another valley. Okay, so my my LZ My LZ is down here in this valley right here. You see it? You can see the riverbed down here. So that's that's a pretty insane treacherous landscape. I mean, you miss that, you're done. 
or you're you're not leaving without a ambulance or getting flown out of there by a helicopter or something. But anyway, so there it is. In order to show you that you are two halves of something good, good and evil, and the Lord wants to restore you by turning the other eye up and converting you and then putting you together. That way, Satan can no longer get his hands on you. He can no longer attach himself to you, okay? All right. Now, please be like Steve and receive your white stone. Just accept that Jesus loves you. It's nothing that you did for him. He came in. See, El the Almighty God had to come get you because you were birthed into a flesh system that you that's the forbidden fruit. If you go there, you, you you're eternally done. You you could be eternally destroyed. Well, Jesus wants to give you eternal life because every earth system implodes itself. It's the serpent eating its own tail. Every single earth ends the same way. The host body always ends in self implosion. Always. That's what it is. It's a cannibalistic, Cain and Abel, cannibalistic system. And so there's an end to it. And that's what I'm trying to show you. There's an end. The end is coming. All right, guys. Now, here's the thing. Part of what I'm doing here is just part of what I'm doing uh, is to encourage you guys that, guys, there's nothing you can do to get in to have an accept believe you believe when you believe on him then and you get converted the word converted means turned quite around when you get turned quite around you get converted your sins are blotted out there's no longer an upside down you you've been converted and you've been turned up your eyes become single your whole body's full of light and now you're sealed until the day of redemption okay that's the way it works now steve got a white stone but it was so the Lord could give all you guys the same understanding as Steve has. Uh, okay, I understand because I've been through it myself. Even though the Lord made me a harbinger, I have suffered from the same thing Steve suffered from. Because at certain times and certain trials I went through, I didn't feel like I was worthy. Now, here's the thing. Don't ever use your freedom in Christ as a cloak for sin. Oh, well, I can do whatever I want. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. That's a clear sign that maybe something's not right with you because I still pray, Lord, I pray that I'm good to go and that I haven't done anything to offend you. That's being in a position of humbleness and admitting that maybe, you know, I pray that I'm accounted worthy to escape all the horrors that are coming on this earth and stand before the Son of Man. The people that are walking around saying, oh, I'm going no matter what, you know, those are the people I worry about the most. I'm like, okay. It's different when you just accept the reality that God has converted you. You remain like, thank you, Father. And you don't you don't manifest that I'm going no matter what attitude. That's kind of scary. Okay. It's a balance. All right. So now here's one of the other things that I have to do sometimes. And the Lord will have me do something like uh, go to Chinati or he'll communicate. I want you to do this. And sometimes I struggle with it. And this is one of the things I'm struggling with. So <clears throat> here, here it is. There's been a couple of times where we've needed just some help in a, a different kind of way. And I'll explain it in just a sec. Right now, we're good to go on doing the DVD. We have everything we need to do the DVD. We're fine. Um, but. There's people that have needed help with car issues. And we had a Lincoln, like we bought a Lincoln for a thousand dollars and it was, it ran really good and it was Corey's car, but we gave it away because someone needed it to get to school and to go to work. So Corey was willing to give his car away so someone could get to school and go to work. Um, we're in that situation again. And I was just saying, Lord, I'll just go buy a beater, you know? So I told the Lord, I'm like, I'll just go buy a beater car because we really could use actually two vehicles because we're out of vehicle because we gave the one away. But now we're in a situation to where we need to help someone. Uh, and we have several things that have happened where we're helping other people do car repairs. And some of the car repairs are not worth doing 
because the car is so no good that to shove money into it would just be throwing money away. So anyway, I, I was praying about it and I said, Lord, what am I supposed to do? How do I deal with this? And I heard the Lord say, just ask, I'll give you whatever you need for whoever needs it. This has been the hardest one probably for me. This is one of the hardest like follow throughs I've had to deal with because I don't like asking for something that, you know, one of it, one part of it's for me. I mean, part of it. If if we end up getting two v beater vehicles, one of them will be for me. If we get one, then it'll be for someone that I need to help. And so it's just kind of weird. It's kind of awkward. So if anyone has a vehicle like that's just been sitting in a garage doing nothing, uh, I know that when my wife, when she was 27 years old, when, when Dorothy died, I had her car sitting around for a long time. And I, it's kind of like, I didn't want to get rid of it because it was hers. And I felt like, uh, anyway, but I got to a point where I was just like, I just got to let it go. And just anyway, so if anyone has a vehicle that they're not using, that it's not important in their life or, you know, whatever the circumstances, as long as it's relatively mechanically sound because <laughs> i know if i give it to somebody and they go oh yeah well here here come the next uh repair things i'll just be like oh anyway i understand that there's always going to be stuff that needs to be fixed on any vehicle that's obvious but uh if anyone has access to a vehicle we could really use some help right now and we could actually use a couple would be awesome to help the people we need to help and I just can't do it anymore. I'm like, guys, I just, I'm too stretched. So anyway, so I'm going to put an email address up um, and you can email us and we'll get back to you and we'll talk about whatever, if there's any possibility, maybe we can have it trailered down or maybe me and Corey and Zach could go meet you or pick it up or whatever. But let me show you a way to get in touch with us. And like I said, guys, this was one of the most awkward things the Lord's asked me to do. I, it's just awkward. So anyway, now I did it, but I didn't want to be unfaithful because I was looking at some beater cars. I was just like, well, I'll just go pay a couple thousand dollars and get a, a cheap, whatever I can get to help everybody out that I need to help out. But the Lord said, no, trust me, Jonathan, just trust me. Just ask for what you need. Okay. So somebody out there watching this video, maybe the Lord's like tapping you on the shoulder and going, this is it. Okay. Here we go. So let me show you the Jonathan Clack. So the Jonathan Clack at gmail.com right there. So you can email us there if you like. And if you can jump in, that would be awesome. And like I said, one of them is going to be actually f for our household or, you know, it's going to intersect our us. So anyway, so that's what I'm asking. If you anyone can do that, that would be awesome. And if not, then I'm going to say, OK, I did what you said. Now I'm going to go buy a beater. All right. OK. And so now I want to show you something really. Uh, this is a comment. And I just thought it was really, uh, really good. Nikki T wrote, and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a sh more sure word of prophecy whereun, whereunto ye do well that take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day, day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay, very, very, very awesome Scripture to go read and understand. God wants you to have this white rock. It's a verdict of not guilty. That's what this is. It's a verdict of not guilty. This whole life that you're in right now, the goal is not to make a lot of money, not to save a whole bunch of money, not to uh, have a bunch of stuff. 
uh, you know, not to be, uh, you know, my whole thing was I'm going to be the best sky surfer in the world. That's what I was going to do. That's what I was doing when the Lord called me. I'm going to be a multimillionaire and be the best sky surfer in the world. That's what my goals were. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I was doing when the Lord called me. And when I realized it's not about me anymore, because when I found out what the world really was, there's only one thing that matters that I help get you out of here. That's it. That's all that matters to me now. That Jonathan Kleck, by my time and my energy and what I do, helps you get converted so you are sealed until the day of redemption. And that you know that you have a white rock, the same as Steve does, and you can take that and put it in your pocket and know that God has deemed you not guilty. That's the best I can do for anyone. It's more valuable than all the money in the world, guys. There's nothing more valuable than knowing that you got your faith back. Anyway, there it is. Okay, well, I love you guys in Christ. If anyone can help with the car thing, that would be a, such a blessing. I am so mentally overloaded just on a daily uh Sometimes I wish I could just put Corey and Zach and some people that are close to me in front of a camera and let them tell you all about it just so you guys understood. But I went to bed yesterday shortly after lunch. I was so tired. I had to pull over and sleep in a parking lot. And then I drove home and I slept from maybe one or two o'clock in the afternoon all the way till 8 a.m. from pure exhaustion. Because I'm, my goal is to try and get as many people out as I can. Like, remember Schindler's List? Did y'all see Schindler's List? At the end of the movie, when Schindler was driving off and everybody was thanking him, the Allied troops were coming in. So the factory workers that Schindler was trying to take care of so they wouldn't get killed by the Nazis, they were all grateful that he had, you know, stepped in to try and help. And he had a moment where he freaked out. And he was like, oh, my watch, I, I could have saved more from if I would have sold my watch or if I sold my ring, I could have gotten two more, two more. I don't ever want to have a regret moment in my life where I go, I could have gotten help to get more people out of here. I never want to have that. So you guys pass the information around, show everybody that you've been turned upside down. The Vatican's a snake. What are you going to do with that? Anyone that ever tries to argue with you say, well. Is the Vatican a snake? Yes or no? And if they want to argue some more, say, well, is the mouth of the snake, that window, is it a big dead sheep? It's a yes or no. So is a snake eating a sheep? It's a yes or no. And that's the guy that the Lord has serving you. The guy that can show you the whole Vatican is a snake eating a sheep. And the sheep are the angels. And you're the angels. And guess what? They don't want you to know the truth. <laughs> that's it. And once you know the truth, then they can't control you anymore. And they're like, oh, whoa, what are you gonna what are you afraid of now? Pfft, death? <laughs> it's like, oh no, I gotta go home. <laughs> so all right, guys, I love you in Christ. Let's get the bear. Get your bear. Now, there's people out there that have called this a cult. Um, it's funny because that didn't happen until some guy in Houston started a, a, like an alleged outreach where we were putting people and fixing up his property, huh? <laughs> where he had a bunch of people living there and he was trying to put them under the law and tell them you can't do this or you can't do that. It's very, really fascinating. But anyway, if I'm going to be a cult for anything, it's going to be the hug cult because I love you in Christ and I want to give you a hug. That's why when you showed up to the night under the stars, I stood there and I gave everybody a hug. The Bible says greet each other with a holy kiss. I'll give you a holy hug because there it is and I can do it. Treat others as you would like to be treated. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself thus fulfilling all the law and you're no longer under any kind of condemnation. If you do that, you'll be fine. Okay? Don't try and make for yourself a set of rules. It's not about a set of rules. It's about love. 
And the system that we're in, you know what it likes to do to love? Destroy it. <laughs> that's, that's their thing, man. Haven't you noticed? Haven't you noticed the whole system is about destroying goodwill and love? Haven't you noticed? Can you imagine if everybody had goodwill towards each other? Why do you think when Christ was born, peace on earth and what? Good will towards men. See, the system that we're in, it's not predicated on good will towards men. It's predicated on destroy the angels in the system. And now they're running out of energy. So the serpent's really getting close to consuming itself. And you're going to see it ramp up. It's going to get crazy. All right, guys. Enough yakking. I love you in Christ. Peace and grace. If anyone can help with the car thing, just leave a message. And uh, either myself or Zach or Corey will get back with you. Okay, we love you in Christ. Take care.